coming up on Art Focus. Well, my favorite medium is watercolor. For the past uh, uh, 14 years of my practice, if you are looking for a Ghanaian watercolorist, it's my name that comes out. Most of the time I get invited to go to schools to talk to the student and inspire them about my practice of watercolor. Well, I aim to keep records and to tell people stories of where I am coming from. I've been doing a lot of work at uh, Jamestown, uh, a seascape in, in Jamestown. Uh, the government has to reconstruct the, the Jamestown harbor, so they have to demolish the entire place. And my work was able to keep the record of time what, how Jamestown used to be as compared to what is happening now. So basically, I record events, places, and the kind of people I meet through my work. My name is Jonathan Kwejiriagri. I, I was born in Aishama in 1994. I grew up there and I did my basic and senior education all in Aishama before moving to Accra. At the age of five to 10, I realized that I love to draw. So I told my dad to enroll me with the roadside artist so that I can have some part-time studies and work with them. So he agreed and took me there. So throughout my basic and senior secondary school, I was doing a, a part-time roadside commercial art, which involves with the signboard, printing of uh, t-shirts, banners, etc. until I finished my secondary school before moving to Accra. There are many forms of art, from painting to sculpture to ceramics. So there are a lot of branches under each of these uh, art forms I've mentioned. And basically I decided to specialize more with painting because I realized that it came naturally with my abilities. So I decided to focus more on painting out of all the branches in the arts. So uh, when I went to the university to do my degree, I focused more on painting and uh, sculpture because the sculpture was a compulsory sub subject as part of the elective. So out of the painting also, they have different uh, media which involves oils, acrylic, watercolor, pastel and all of that under the painting. So in all of this media, I decided to specialize with watercolor because I realized that in Ghana and many parts of Africa, watercolor is not uh, a kind of medium most of the artists focused more on. A lot have diverted more into acrylic painting because that is the most common media in, in Ghana and many parts of Africa. So I decided to specialize more with watercolor in order to be different from the, the rest. So even though watercolor has its own challenges, especially living in, in Ghana or Africa as a whole, watercolor is something that basically a lot of people, a lot of artists don't really uh, get much involved in. So, so when I decided to study uh, watercolor, I was able to research more into it to find solution and also how to distinguish myself from the rest of the artists so that I became like a leading watercolorist for Ghana and perhaps Africa. And so far with my practice with watercolor, I've been able to meet up with a lot of the world international masters from China, Europe, and America. So right now, for the past uh, uh, 14 years of my practice, if you are looking for a Ghanaian watercolorist, it's my name that comes out. And I have used that 
to influence a lot of uh, students, mostly from my university days to uh, people calling me for uh, seminars and workshops because some of the art teachers in various uh, institutions in the secondary school in Ghana are all, mostly are all my mates. So most of the time I get invites to go to schools to talk to the students and inspire them about my practice of watercolor and how far I've used it to represent Ghana when it comes to watercolor art. Uh, when it comes to painting, I decided to narrow it down because of the, the broadness of art. Those who influenced me a lot, the first one is uh, Master Guan Wenjin in China. He is a Chinese uh, leading watercolorist who made a lot of impact and influence when it comes to watercolor art because of Chinese, their calligraphy style of writing they are best known with watercolors. So Master Guan Wenjin was someone who was able to bring the watercolor to the next level in China that it influenced a lot of their uh, contemporary and modern style of watercolor painting. So he's one of the great artists when it comes to watercolor painting in China. So he was the one that influenced me a lot. And in 2017, I had the privilege of uh, meeting with him. And before that, we, I was able to connect with him through the internet. Even though he doesn't speak English, he always finds a way to communicate with me in English. And in Ghana, one of the artists I respect most is uh, Professor uh, Abladi Glover from uh, Artist Alliance Gallery. My inspiration comes in a different way. Sometimes um, the inspiration comes to me uh, naturally. Sometimes too, depending on the places and the kind of people that I meet, I'm able to pick up my inspiration. If you look at the, the painting behind me, it's called A Look Into the New World. I got this inspiration when I visited Accra Central and I saw this uh, little girl, uh, uh, you know, working, selling things in the market with the uh, coronavirus, uh, the mask, I find it very interesting. So that, these are some of the ways I get my inspiration. And when I visit the beach also, because I like to paint more of the, the seascapes, you know, because I grew up in the southern parts, uh, Tema and schooling in Winneba, and also coming from the coast, all this, offers me the opportunity to pick my inspiration anytime I visit those places. I normally don't work most of the time uh, during the day because of the distractions and the heat. It can, doesn't allow me to, to think well. But if I've already started a work which usually comes in the midnight, I can continue it during the daytime because I've already get, got the the setup or the, the, the whole concept already. So the rest is to just using the technicalities to finish it up. But if you used to, uh, how to start a painting or to create a painting, I usually do that uh, at night. I am to keep records and to tell people stories of where I am coming from. So basically I remember uh, some few months back, I did a lot of, I've been doing a lot of work at uh, Jamestown, uh, the seascape in, in Jamestown. And a few months ago, there was, uh, uh, the government has to reconstruct the, the Jamestown harbor. So they have to demolish the entire place. And my work was able to keep the record of time, what, how Jamestown used to be as compared to what is happening now. So basically, I record events, places, and the kind of people I meet through my work. Well, I've developed my career over the years because uh, when I started uh, with watercolor practice, because it's really very difficult medium that it, it poses a lot of challenges to many artists starting from the materials to the technique and the understanding of how to use watercolor. So I remember when I started I couldn't do as uh, the scale was very small like a postcard size but over the years 
I've been able to develop my skills and my understanding in watercolor to the point that I'm able to do an eight feet watercolor size painting, which has never happened perhaps in Ghana and many parts of Africa. So that is how I have involved to develop my career over the years. Is it easy coming, like getting the materials? In Ghana, no, it's, it's very, very difficult. So those were the early challenges I started experiencing. And I almost gave up at a point because my friends and those around me didn't understand why I've chosen something that is not easy finding the, the materials. Because basically most artists work with what the readiness of the materials available for them. So for me, I, I saw it as a challenge and how to overcome it. I was able to connect with people outside Ghana to know where to get those materials using my friends and family outside to help me gather those materials. And so far, I've gotten to the point that now I'm connected to uh, companies that manufacture those materials. For example, it's my paint that I use, which is a machine gold paint made in South Korea. The company sent me uh, the materials to use in their name as a brand ambassador. So it is something recommendable that I'm always happy about that. I'm able to com uh, conquer that challenge. And when it talks about the brush also, I have a company that sponsors the brushes I use. And the people too, I still have some contact that I'm able to get the, the materials that I need. Seeking out opportunities well, has been much easier as compared in the 80s or in the, in the 90s. Uh, because of the help of the, the internet and social media, it is much easier finding opportunity. It all depends how you placed yourself and how well you connect with the society outside. For example, if you are a watercolorist as I am, ability to uh, have a social media page, ability to do good artwork and to project yourself to the world, you automatically get people following you, getting to understand what you do and opportunities one way or the other will start opening up to you. There are also other societies, maybe if you are uh, an oil painter, you are uh, a sculptor, one way or the other, through the help of the internet, you are, you'll be able to find uh, people doing the same thing who are outside your jurisdiction so that you are able to connect with them and you start to find opportunities there. Yes, I do a lot of exhibitions. Mostly my exhibition started to happen outside the country. After my, my first uh, show in Ghana with a friend, uh, right from there, I started having more opportunities with the watercolor to travel for exhibition. So basically I do most of my exhibition outside uh, the, the country. And I've been able to exhibit in in China, Romania, uh, France, Turkey, uh, Mexico, US, almost half of the, the, the countries. My work has been exhibited uh, in group shows and also traveling for uh, shows, solo exhibition in, in Nigeria, in Romania, and most of them too are uh, group exhibition with my colleagues from other countries that we meet together to, to do exhibitions in various countries. The Chinese government in 2014 invited me to uh, participate in an international exhibition with other international artists. So we were 16 international artists from different countries and in Africa, I was the only one invited. So the government made an offer to collect four of my paintings into their National Museum and they, they paid very well to collect those works. Same for other artists as well who they were able to turn their life 
based on that money. Yes. With my experience so far hanging around and looking at Ghanaian art and the way people see it, I don't think uh, people don't like art in Ghana as others may see it. I, what I find interesting is that people in Ghana really, really do appreciate art. Unfortunately, our kind of system and the economic uh, challenges, it does not allow many Ghanaians locally here to invest in the arts because of the, the, our economic challenges we do have in the, in the country. Because I remember uh, one of my workers helping to build this my house. One of them said to me that when he has money, he would like to buy one of my paintings. And I found it very interesting. Somebody of an average Ghanaian worker having the thought to even say that. Imagine he, he is able to make some money. I'm sure if his mind doesn't change, he will surely buy the art. And I also have Ghanaians here who also patronize and buy my paintings. So, most of the workers I've been able to come across with, they all have a good taste to buy the art, but unfortunately, they don't have that kind of means to, but they really do appreciate art. From my point of view, I don't think Ghanaians don't like art. They do, but... How do you price your work? Well, my pricing usually depends on the size the size I'm, I'm doing because this is watercolor so it has its own uh, way you can use to determine the, the price also your level and uh, your experience can also determine your pricing of an, of an artwork the Chinese government in 2014 invited me to uh, participate in an international exhibition with other international artists. So we were 16 international artists from different countries and in Africa I was the only one invited. So the government made an offer to collect four of my paintings into their national museum and they, they paid very well to collect those works. Same for other artists as well who they were able to turn their life based on that money, yes. I'm following the watercolor trend and it has existed for so many years. So that is the trend I am following to also contribute my own legacy, how far I'll be able to represent myself for Ghana and Africa when it comes to watercolor. So I am part of an, a large international uh, watercolor society group and I'm the country rep for International Watercolor Society, which we have our uh, head office in Turkey. So I am following the trend of watercolor, and I'm glad I'm one of the, the leading masters when, uh, from Africa when we meet. So that is the trend I am following, not looking at the other trend that is happening right now with the contemporary uh, style or with contemporary art. Growing up, you really had support from your parents? Yes, I did have a lot of support from my parents. Basically, not financially per se, but I really do got their support and consent that they were not against me being an artist. None of my siblings also were against it. And fortunately for me, uh, one of my uncles, Mr. Richard Aquarison, uh, returned from Canada and settled in Ghana and he was an art uh, collector and also he had a museum in Canada. So 
when he realized that he has a nephew who is more also who wants to be an artist he rather asked me to move to Accra to stay with him and develop myself so he gave me all the support and helped me to go to the university to do my degree in art and also supported my initial travelings in order to be at the level that you can now say is comfortable with me that I've now grown to be myself. Looking at our society, it is very, very difficult for a child convincing the parent who wants to be an artist. But one thing I've also seen is that a child that will be an artist, whether he got the support from the parents or not, that child will still grow up to be the artist he or she is supposed to be or meant to be. Because art is a natural talent. And God specifically uh, gave some people ability to be an artist. So if you look at Exodus uh, 31 verse 3, it says that he, God, has filled some people with a certain ability to do all kinds of artistic work. So you could see that regardless of the challenges you may have, whether from the, your parents or the society, you cannot fight that natural abilities God has given you. You can end up being a doctor, you can end up being a lawyer, but the art will always call you. I, for instance, I'm a trained teacher from the University of Education, all right. I did my internship as a teacher at Achimota School, but I realized that no matter how I go fully as a teacher that is a noble profession that my parents will be proud of or my uncle will be proud of that I'm a teacher at a, this school, I still find it strongly that the art always calls me to go and paint. So I may be in the classroom, but the, the zeal will come naturally that I have to stop and go and paint. So our parents, they are in Ghana, for example, the, most of the parents are yet to see uh, artists who are really making it big time so that they will now see that, oh, it wasn't a bad profession if somebody said they want to be an artist. Unfortunately, we see artists or visual art students to be the low-minded people. But one thing they don't know is that everything around us is art. And without art, I don't know how we'll be able to exist in this world from fashion, to clothing, to music, to, to dancing, name it, from the cars we drive. All of these things are designed by artists. So for a nation to uh, develop, when you ask many people why they want to travel to abroad, because the basic thing they will say is that abroad is beautiful than, than Ghana, let me say. But what makes the difference between the abroad and Ghana? The kind of infrastructure development and the artistic uh, way they have represented their roads, their landscaping, it makes it more attractive that it is beautiful than Ghana. So if Ghana is to look into the artists and combine them with uh, maybe the, the technical people, maybe KNUST, you could see that the artists will be able to bring the, the development ideas, whilst the, the mathematician or the scientist will also come up with how that particular thing will function. Like, for example, Leonardo da Vinci was an inventor and also an artist, a sculptor, a musician, a poet, etc. And he was able to develop the idea of uh, the, the parachute, for example, uh, the, the tank the soldiers use for war, and many, many other inventions. 
because he was able to sketch out how the thing is supposed to function. But imagine he cannot draw or he, he doesn't have that uh, artistic abilities. It would have been difficult to bring all this invention out. So parents are yet to see. And the good news is that some Ghanaian artists have really made it that now they can afford anything they want to based on just selling one artwork. And we have a lot of them right now. And it's just a matter of time. A lot of artists too will now be seen like the, the, the work you guys are doing right now. It is going to help parents to know that, oh, being an artist, you can, you'll be able to afford a car, you can equally live well, buy whatever you want to buy. It's also a noble profession. I remember when football started, a lot of parents didn't want their children to be in the sports fraternity. But as when the time went on that they realized that, no, a footballer can actually make this match after 90 minutes. Then they started encouraging their children to be footballers. So it's just a matter of time also. Parents need to see more of the artist. And this will be possible through media publications and the announcement that goes around that. An artist lives here and he actually built this house or bought this car based from uh, the artwork that they do.